Hey y'all, welcome back. It's been quite a while uh, for my dragon making video series. Uh, we just, 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 just finished Simon here. Simon is the dragon of speed. Mm, he's for a care home that I'm working at. Uh, there's going to be a set of three dragons that I'm going to be giving to them. I'm thinking that they're going to be the dragons of speed, compassion, and care. So uh, we'll see, you know, what personalities they tell me about themselves afterwards while I'm making them. But uh, Simon here, his name was chosen by myself and my deities. And during the dragon making ceremony. And we're about to start on our next one. Woo! So let's get started with that. Whoop! Here's the chain mail and my mug. Okay. Let's make some dragons. Let's make some dragons now. That's Charlotte. Let's make some old dragons. This one's Octavia. We need some quarter inch rings. 18 gauge, of course. Cause that seems to be the norm. For making these dragons here. So all of these rings need to be open here because uh, the first stretch of scales, the uh, rings that I put together, are for the scale back here. And the scale itself acts as a closed ring. So all of the rings initially around it all need to be open. And we gonna need 18 times two rings at first. What does that equal? 36, I think. Oh, that's not right. It's hard to like sing and do math at the same time. I gotta sing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, 15 and 15 is 32. Then we got another, well, was another six on there. So yeah, 36. Oh goodness, I did have it. Wonderful. 36 rings I need. He 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 initially. Then we need another 18. What's that gonna make right there? 36, 46, 56, 55, 54. Let's kind of figure this out here. Okay, so we got 54 for the initial bit here. Then we need another 36. So 54, 70, 84. So 90. I think that it takes 90 rings to make a dragon back. Ooh, something new figured out. There's 108 rings in uh, all of the legs of the dragon. I can't recall how much the head was. Uh, let's see. 7 and 7. 14 times 2 is 28, plus another 7 and 7, so 28 plus 14, and 38, and 44 to 42. For some reason I think there's more rings than that. Oh, there's all the side rings too. 32, did I say 32? 42, oh, whatever, I'm not done counting here. <laughs> we'll count the head when we get to the head. Still trying to figure it out in my head. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Just a heads up, my next tree might be located somewhere slightly differently. Just pondering in my new apartment. I'm like right next to the wall that's, uh, you know, my neighbors, that one. So I don't really want to wake them up or, you know, disturb them with my singing and stuff. So I may, my, well, not may, will be migrating into the bedroom sometime in the near future. I'll probably just try this one stream right now, just because, you know, I got a roll on it. Reorganizing all of the furniture and all of the computer equipment and everything would take me, like, you know, half an hour, 40 minutes. And at that point, it's basically my bedtime. <laughs> and so we'll give her like this for now. What do we have in here? A whole pile of scales. We're going to do a green dragon next. We need a blue dragon, a green dragon, and a red dragon. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Those the last two are the shoulders of each little dragon it gives. There we go. Gives them shoulder pads. Plates, shoulder plates. There we go. My box of scales. We're gonna have to top up the green soon, apparently. Every dragon starts with a, half, or a quarter inch ring. I was gonna say half inch ring, but that's way, 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 way too big. Mm -hmm. Go. Stop biting. There you go. Technically, I could also start it with a, uh, what you call it, 732 inch ring, since those are the head rings, and the top two rings on the top scale are going to end up being a 732 inch. But I find that complicates the building process just a little bit. So, uh, no, we start with a quarter inch ring. <laughs> just hypothesizing. I'm killing the dragon of compassion from this one. So my bedroom itself is a little bit small. If you uh, go, if you go back in my videos and look at the uh, my new place video there, or a short tour or something like that, and you'll get the gist of it. But I already have a filing cabinet in my bed in there, so fitting this desk in there could be a little problematic. We'll see how that goes. I think it'll be possible. I think it'll be possible. I would kind of like it more out here, but you know, I also don't want to disturb my neighbor, so. You know, kind of the toss-up situation there. I'll probably ask him at some point or another if he can hear my singing, and if not, then you know, just have at it here. Or maybe just further away from the wall itself. <laughs> 
Stop wondering. Like over closer to the door over there. There's a camera that way. Or maybe more that way. I've got my bike over there right now, but I can swap the two of them pretty easily. Then I'm close to an outside wall. But you know, I'm not too terribly concerned about audio getting out. It's kind of rare that I hear, well, yeah, I hear some vehicles going by outside. That's really about it. And that's the whole thing about being a live streamer, or in this case, just a blogger until I get the good enough equipment to live stream. Being a live streamer, um, uh, I have to take into account my audio levels. Because, you know, if I'm doing an hour or hours of, you know, streaming, then I'm going to be doing hours and hours of talking and stuff. And that could be annoying. <laughs> Someone next door trying to watch the news or something like that, then coming through the wall. Like, I don't know, I don't want to disturb people, you know? Thinking of others. I actually kind of have vague dreams of essentially buying, like, I don't know many, how many hundreds I would need, but uh, those, like, you know, gross of eggs worth of egg carton type of, you know, the Ripley looking cardboard things. Uh, getting a whole ton of those and for all intents and purposes coating my entire place in them. You know, the entire place in that case will be drab brown unless I want to take the effort to spray paint it all, which is, you know, nice. It would look all nice and white and stuff. It would, it wastes a lot of paint. You know, I'm pretty environmental and it's like, hey, can I put up with like brown walls for the sake of not using that paint? Eh, yeah, no. Also, there's the question of where do I paint it? Because, you know, I'm living in an apartment here. Ah, dilemmas, things to solve in the future. The time being, I have this. I'm also going to try and see if I can live stream to YouTube instead because I was live streaming to Twitch and it was very choppy and basically unwatchable. So that's unfortunate because Twitch is my, uh, you know, ideal live stream venue. Is that the right word? Live stream place. So the fact that that's kind of cut off for me right now. I have vague hopes that a faster computer would help, but I kind of doubt it with my internet speed. But maybe live streaming to YouTube. I know that I can do video chatting on YouTube with this speed of internet, so maybe, maybe. I'll try to. I'll do this one recorded first. Mm-hmm. 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 to you about, you know, the intricacies of setting up my computer system and, and everything like that, but I am basically just rebuilding everything right now, so starting from scratch. We're getting on board right at the start of a whole new era here. Uh, or at least my era in the paw. The internet is unfortunately quite slow, at least in this particular building. And I know it seems a little bit unlikely that I'm going to be moving again uh, before I leave, which I'm guesstimating will be in about two years. So we'll see. I really, really do want to live stream again. Hope YouTube works. If I have to leave Twitch for two years, then, you know, oh well, but uh, maybe their upload system from uh, transferring from Twitch to YouTube will work better at that point. Or maybe I'll just stay on uh, YouTube entirely. Just uh, thinking of it. Oh, Twitch has just so many better features, though. Oh, I'm sure I'll return to Twitch at some point or another. actually count those uh, rings that are needed inside of a dragon head in my head yet. Kind of, eh, 
not all that crazy important. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now that it's on my head again, I'm going to try and count it. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so it's actually 788 eight, and 788 eight initially. And then another 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 6. So 788, 788, 66. So 8 times 4 is 1632. And then two sevens is 14, so 32, 42, 3, 44, 45, 46, and 56, 57, 58. Okay, so apparently 58 rings in a dragon head. Attaching the head to the body takes another one usually, maybe three, depends on the dragon head. So between 52 to 55. You know, it depends on the style of the dragon head that I'm making. There's a few minor different changes. And actually, there's an entirely different type of dragon head that in, or adds like an extra six rings all told. I kept on saying entirely too much all told. <laughs> Let's get those two 732 rings that we need here to go on the top of the neck here. I usually like to put a work holder ring right over here, kind of attach it to those two 732 inch rings in some manner. Just so it's kind of, you know, a larger ring for me to hold on to and grasp on to when I'm holding the rest of the scales there. And get the pliers out of the way. Got the rest of the scales, then you've got the work holder over here. So I just kind of do that so I can you know, hold on to it and work with the dragon well. Oh, I found a sweet mix. It's a chamomile and birdseed. Because, you know, I've always kind of wondered what birdseed tastes like, because I've never really bothered trying it. So I pulled out the woodiest uh, kind of bits in there, like the uh, kind of black seeds that, you know, sort of like sunflower that you have to take the shell off of. I didn't really want to deal with the shell at all. So I took those out. Basically just these straight up edible seeds. And they're not bad. I haven't tried them just straight up dry, but if you soak them for a little while in water, you know, they have a nice kind of chewy, crunchy texture, decent taste. I can see why birds like them. So my bird seed tea. <laughs> that works well for the dragon to speed there. Birds are pretty quick. In the meantime, in the background to all this music, I'm uh, chatting with my deities as well. As just having a conversation with the pool in the same Sugamiyaki Bawa Wupli Sorniwada, my turtle spirit. And uh, she was going on about how uh, back there I said uh, birds are quick. Uh, she was saying uh, birds are hasty, you know, kind of like following along in my mind as well. And uh, my word quick spat out faster, so. It was like, oh, I wanted the word hasty because that would have sounded a little bit better to her. And I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, you weren't hasty enough because I was too quick. <laughs> oh, it's a little moment with my deity there. Actually, just had another quick conversation with a the pool there. Um, uh, she was saying that, uh, yes, I should continue to refer to her as my uh, turtle spirit, as opposed to, say, like, you know, just saying my deity. Because, you know, she likes to be identified as a turtle. <laughs> Who wouldn't, honestly? Like, I've gone on some adventures with her where I've seen her side of things. No oh, goodness, just basking on a rock, feeling the sun bake into you, and... Mm, yeah. Yeah, fun stuff. Sitting in the rain, oh, uh, sitting in the rain and uh, kind of hearing and feeling the rain kind of better against your uh, shield, better against your shell. Oh, goodness. 
There's a wonderful feeling. I love her. She's awesome. I love you, Koro. Life be with you, Apu. Because that kind of reminds me of one other thing that I'm uh, planning to get to at some point or another. Is basically write a book or a novel or something about my adventures into spirituality. Because it all began with a spirit named, uh, well, at the time, it's, 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 Oh, so that was the original name of the spirit, uh, which uh, we kind of, uh, in conjunction with each other, uh, renamed to Panami. It's, you know, a lot easier to say, and I'm sure I've uh, said the first kind of version there a little bit too short to begin with. Uh, the you know, some parts of it, uh, the S's there at the start should have been stretched out. Anyways, so yeah, they're awesome too. I kind of talk to them as a friend nowadays more than anything else. I have uh, four main deities that I uh, currently worship. Uh, that's uh, the Divine Femininity. There's Apul Naseye, there's God, and there's Mother Earth. So yeah, we all get along really awesome and stuff. Oop, I apologize, the Divine Feminine. I used to call her the Divine Femininity, but we're kind of uh, changing it now to just the Divine Feminine, just because that's how most other people refer to her in, you know, changes over time and stuff. I also call her Goddess a fair amount of the time, too. Same with the pool, actually, too, and Mother Earth. And, you know, God is God. <laughs> or I sometimes call my Father or my Savior, Lord. It's been a while since I've referred to him as Jesus. Okay, there we go. We're getting there. We've uh, added the extra side rings for most of the back here. We're getting close to having a dragon caterpillar, I like to call them. And you know, it's uh, just the back, basically. That's a dragon caterpillar. Then when the dragon gets its tail, that's a lesser dragon snake. Then when it gets the head, that's a greater dragon snake, and also when the dragon gets its name. And then when it gets the arms, it's a full-fledged dragon. Then when it gets its clasp, then it's a dragon that can fly, because it can travel with you. <laughs> the only dragons that can actually fly are the ones with wings. I've made, uh, oh, nope, there's still only one dragon, actually. That is uh, Crystal, the dragon of spirituality. Um, uh, my other dragon, who isn't immediately beside me at the moment, um, uh, Charlemagne and Cleopatra, a two-headed dragon. For a short time, uh, they also had uh, wings as well. So uh, they could fly, but uh, kind of uh, us as a group determined that, you know, that just didn't, it didn't look right. It was too much because uh, they have two heads and a, a forked tail. I was going to say split tail, which I guess is true as well. So yeah, forked tail, like, you know, the last, say, inch of tail, a few centimeters there, is forked. They have kind of two tips of a tail. So that combined with wings, it was just too much. Can't imagine her flying would have been all that well anyway. You know, I'm sure she would have practiced, but with two heads at the top, I would have made it kind of quite unbalanced, I'd think. So maybe it's for the best, but I'm sure she would have learned to fly regardless. Anywho, we decided to uh, scrap the idea of uh, her flying anyway. Her, them. <laughs> Looks like uh, Cleopatra had the focus there. Mm -hmm. Kind of like me. That's guy and a girl, and so am I, because I'm gender fluid. It's under the trans umbrella, like transgender. So uh, I'm gender fluid, which is, you know, just inside of there. It means my gender can fluctuate from guy to girl uh, semi at random, but I do seem to have some uh, general control over it. Like, you know, I can force it one way or the other kind of at will. Kind of practiced that a few years ago. Don't do it all that often, but I kind of do it unconsciously without thinking. Just like, I'm all guyish now or something like that. You know, for all intents and oh goodness, this ring didn't go through properly here. 
you get the idea. Okay, you off, you on, I think. That one looks horribly wrong. Second attempt. Ring tool, get onto this hand. Now I have to make sure that I'm making this as interwoven four in one, as opposed to uh, dragon back. You know, dragon back, you would think that that would by far be like a more appropriate weave to make the dragon back out of, cause dragon back. But if you'll have a look, see at uh, these two dragons, uh, Octavia here is still dragon back. Hope you can see. And Simon here is interwoven four in one. So, well, you can see, here, I'll hold this closer to the camera. That dragon back gives a bit more of a rounder appearance, like uh, interwoven four in one kind of has a flatter belly, but the uh, springs on the bottom of the belly kind of go with the grain so the dragon can slide forward faster and, you know, more efficiently. Whereas these are going against the grain, so uh, if the dragon is kind of crawling forward or sliding forwards, then it'll, you know, it'll drag more. So the uh, dragon back style dragons can move a little bit slower than the interwoven form of dragons. That's just how it goes for them. <laughs> I'm going to make another uh, in or dragon back dragon sometime in the future as well. I'm not sure if I want to introduce that kind of change to these three dragons in particular, because they are dragons for the like care home that I'm working in. I suppose I could. They're supposed to be kind of uh, near twins of each other though. So uh, we'll see where my decision making goes on that. Well, we can't make the... Can we make the dragon dragon back? Heck, where did dragon go? Green dragon, there you are. We're not too far along here. What the heck? Let's make this dragon uh, dragon back dragon. <laughs> oh, okay, you go through slightly differently. <laughs> This is coming along nicely. Yeah, this definitely adds to the customiz customizability of the dragon, so all of the bellies aren't essentially the same. So we have some faster dragons, we have some slower dragons. If this is the dragon of compassion, then it makes sense that you want to take that a little bit slower. That one over there is the dragon of speed, so you know that's it very much stands to reason that we should be using the faster configuration for that one. It's hard to say because sometimes with dragons they'll only tell you towards the very, 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 very end of what they are the dragon of, which is exactly what happened with Simon there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Whereas with Charlotte over here, a very Batavia, uh, she's the dragon of color. Oh goodness. I'm trying to escape. The dragon of color. You can see by all the colors on her back there. This one. Uh, because we were making her right from the get-go to have all of the colors of the scales that I uh, use in the future, or scales that I've uh, used in the past. And I do have a few new colors of scale coming up in the future, so I'm going to be adding those to her as well. That would be pretty awesome. So she's going to grow a little bit. And I'll have to like, you know, kind of not kiss her goodbye, but I'm so sorry you're going to be feeling some pain because you're going to have to like open you up and take you apart a little bit so we can put some extra scales inside of you. And I know it's going to hurt because you're gonna, literally going to be in a half for a while. But don't worry, I'll take good care of you and keep you all alive and stuff. 
and you'll be all awesome and everything. It's like going under anesthesia. Like, uh, she seems a little bit nervous right now. Don't worry. Don't worry, I won't forget about you. You will be back together again. Don't you worry. I'll figure it out. Been chain mailing for near 20 years now. Near 20? Maybe 20. I'll have to double check that. Kind of tempted to right now, to be honest. Why not? I'm recording and not specifically streaming, which means my computer has extra power to be able to open up a browser. Whereas when I was trying to stream, I shut down like everything in the vague uh, hopes that I'd have enough bandwidth to stream. Didn't seem like it to Twitch, but again, we'll try it in a few other ways there. Uh, crank my back a little. I have on uh, Planet Zebeth, zebeth.shinesparkers.net. Um, uh, the exact date that I made my very first chainmail item, pretty sure I kept the date of that one. Oops, and I clicked on the wrong thing. Clicked on C for, uh, well, C for contact, but in my mind it was C for chainmail. So, you know, if I clicked on the contact link instead of the stuff link, which is where I should go, because inside of stuff is chainmail, and inside of chainmail is the glove. The very first glove that I made out of coat hanger wire. Which I actually have right here. This giant monstrosity is made with 24 coat hangers. And uh, each ring was hand coiled and cut with a pair of needle nosed pliers. And it was quite fulfilling. Uh, June 10th, 2001. Really? 2001? Okay. So, there's exactly 20 of them? That doesn't make sense. Yes, I was. Huh. I could have sworn that I made that earlier than 20. Okay, well that's cool. Uh, 2001, so not quite 20 years. What's that make it? 18, 19 something? It's 2019, so 18 years. And you're 20 years chain mailing. <laughs> I'll have to post that online later. The anniversary of the very first chainmail thing that I ever made. Kind of like the anniversary of Planet Zebeth, which is coming up soon. That was March 16th. Was that 2001 or was that 2006? I want to see for some weird reason. We also have that exact date recorded. Bloop. Oh, and also, very many heartfelt thanks to, uh, what you may call it, Doug Bowser, who's taking over as president of Nintendo of America. I hope you do awesome and have good luck and uh, bring us out there, Metroid. <laughs> uh, March 16th, 2002. Okay, so it came uh, one year after the chain mail. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> At some point I'm gonna make like a uh, a banner thingy on for the live stream or something like that. Or it just shows all of the comics one after the other in a joint animated GIF type of thing. And you know, keeps each one on screen for like 10 seconds or something like that. I don't know if I'd want to like customize it to the point that the ones that are really text heavy for it to keep them longer. I suppose I could, but that's 1000, well, you know, one comic, one comic. 1,300 strips, I'm at 1,299 right now. So, do I want to customize every single frame of 1,300 frames? I don't know about that one. You know, technically we are at 1,300 uh, strips right now. If you want to count the uh, bonus strip that was kind of put into the middle of it all, it was a uh, kind of pseudo let's fill this 
plot, or not so much a plot hole, but a, uh, you know, something seen off camera that could be construed as bad. So I kind of put a comic after that saying, there, get your mind out of the gutter. <laughs> I almost should have left that out, but, you know, I was trying to be slightly more wholesome, I guess. It was, it was too crude. I'm glad I put that extra comic in. Because, you know, I've got swearing and stuff in my comics, and, you know, it's, I wouldn't say R-rated. Oh, goodness, what does it take to get R-rated? 18? Oh, there's swearing in it anyway. <laughs> but uh, one way or the other, I was, uh, I'm going for a generally more wholesome appearance. Wholesome, but with swears. Yeah, that's about it. And alcoholism. And general chaos and insanity and murder of hundreds of thousands of small creatures. But they multiply. And, you know, they just infinitely reproduce. Yeah, that one's a little bit debatable infinitely part because you know cabbage might stop them from uh kind of reappearing after three minions reappeared like out of the same like minion generating tube so cabbage made it so that only three of them appear but uh, you know if the uh characters wander off for a few minutes and then come back then they're going to be renewed again so it's kind of a little bit more than that mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, now I've got to add on these last two scales here to give us the shoulders, so that will give us a dragon caterpillar. Wow! Well, our little dragons get bigger. We've been going half an hour. Not too bad, not too bad. So let's see what we can have. What we can have. Okay, so this needs to go behind the first scale. And this dragon back is ever so slightly different from these other dragon backs, and I haven't made one in a dragon back weave for a while. <laughs> but we do not want to scale between that and that, so we are going through. What are we going through here? As I have a ponder. Okay, the exit forms above the top scale. There's no exit forms above the top scale right now, because we need to add another few rings. So, okay, I'm going to take this ring out just to make this part a little bit easier. A little less complicated. It's easiest to put this ring in last as opposed to working around it. There we go. I think this will help. You know, since uh, my uh, green first green dragon, Robin, was uh, also one of the ones that had a dragon back skate or uh, weave belly, uh, this dragon is going to be a near perfect replica, or not perfect replica, near identical twin to Robin. So hey, that's kind of cool. Oh, and that was the dragon of forests and trees. So that's pretty cool. I'm gonna see if I can adjust the camera, maybe just a touch. Just a touch, touch. I want you to see the actual chain wheeling a bit better. That's not bad. There we go. I can see a cardboard box behind me somewhere. That one? Nope. That one? There we go. Kind of clean up the background a little bit. There's a spool of wire. Huh. 
in the school of Ethernet cable. Okay. Now back to this. Okay, there we go. Now I've got the two rings that I am going to be going through with this uh, shoulder scale. There we go. That's what was missing. So we open this up, pop this scale on, pop it closed, whoop, and we got to do the same with this ring down here. Open you up, slide you through. Beautiful, got one shoulder in. Now we need the other one. Now we need the, I gotta practice kind of showing you closer to the camera. Right now I have the camera really far away. That's one shoulder. So I've gotta hold it up like that more, mental note. I do kind of like this view in that you get a good overall view of everything. Which is nice, is nice. Mm -hmm. Have any of you ever played uh, Missile Command? Missile Command for Atari 7800? That game was phenomenal. That sound kind of reminded me of that game. When they, uh, at the end of a level, they're kind of counting down your ammunition piles and cities. And yeah, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Bleeping, blipping sounds. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be trying to do one uh, kind of blog stream every day after work, and that would be pretty awesome. Kind of a nice, whatchamacallit, schedule to keep. Not too crazy hectic, doesn't take too crazy much amount of time out of, you know, the rest of the stuff that I need to do as a whole. Which for the most part is just organize my house. Oh goodness, I'll give you a quick look-see. Uh, that chaos behind me is basically what I'm working around. Just stuff piled up. Okay, let's see if I can get this camera back in place. <laughs> I apologize so much. The camera is balanced in a poor location, and it's just kind of yeah. decent, semi-decent. Yeah. Okay. All right, we got something to work with here. One moment. That was drippy. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, we need this one open ring. Or where did the other open one go? There you are. And we're going to go through this scale. And then through these two rings. This is one of the more difficult rings to add into a dragon. The one that holds the two shoulder scales in place. So you need to get it behind this uh, first scale. And go back in and open the ring in the opposite direction. Left-handed, I like to call it so that I can more easily go through the whole of this scale, the other shoulder. Come on. Come on, there you go. And then we get our pliers into there. Close that up. And that keeps those two scales from, you know, like sliding out from behind this uh, first scale. So, whoa, we have a dragon caterpillar. This sound a dragon makes. <laughs> so we have a dragon caterpillar. We saw a man's watch in here. And in the meantime, what we'll do is make this really clear. We need a sample dragon. We're a piece of boys. Where are you, Albert? Or Jill one you two toys? Okay, so we have a sample bit of elf weave here, which is uh, what I use to start my tails. Uh, let me try and show you. That's an elf weave. 
it's a really fun weave to work with. Oh goodness. And uh, just looks really fancy and nice and makes a really nice dragon tail. So we need even more quarter inch rings. <laughs> Basically the first like two thirds of the dragon is all quarter inch rings. Then after that it's uh, all 732 inch rings for the head. Or it may be quarter inch rings depending on what style of dragon head we're making. If it's a toothed dragon, it, uh, what's the term I'm looking for there? Yeah, it uses quarter inch rings and also uh, 532 inch rings. Or is it, no, 316, sorry. Quarter inch and 316 inch rings. So there's more rings inside of that type of hat. And you can see a sample of that with Charlotte here. Charlotte has the extra teeth on the side of her mouth there, you can see. Hopefully you can see. Yeah, there's a really good view. And let me show you Simon here who does not. Then you can see the comparison between the two really nicely. Uh, the bottom one there is just straight up uh, alien male weave. And the top one, Charlotte, is alien male with the extra rings on the side to basically shrink the AR side or the AR down a little bit. And that allows me to, you know, essentially keep it tight inside of there. Because uh, Alien Male is unfortunately an AR specific weave, uh, that stands for aspect ratio, and which means that if the rings are too big, then the weave will get too loose and it'll kind of slide apart and, you know, won't uh, follow the exact same nice convenient pattern and everything. Uh, Jen's Pine to Linkage is another example of a weave that does that. And uh, so to, well, like the, uh, what's it called, 732 inch rings work really, really good. They're like the perfect size to make the head and keep everything all, you know, in joint with each other, all in line with each other. And uh, since with the black and steel rings, which is how I first came to make a tooth dragon head, uh, the black and steel doesn't, steel doesn't come in 732 inch rings, so I had to use quarter inch rings. And I have had a uh, black dragon where I've uh, literally cut down the uh, 50 some odd rings that it takes to make the head so that I can make it all in essentially 732 inch. That's very time consuming and I'm not all that fond of it. And uh, so what I do is uh, those black dragons often have the extra teeth like Charlotte there because that lets me use the quarter inch rings and uh, 3 16 inch rings which is what they sell in the black and steel. Now I could get black and steel in 732 inch rings but I would have to spend approximately two thousand dollars on them because they only make them essentially custom or in these two specific sizes. Honestly, in my next order, I should probably order a whole crap ton of at least these two sizes, just in case they stop carrying them entirely, which would be awful. So it would be nice to at least, you know, make a whole pile of dragons in black if they should happen to discontinue that color. And, you know, just go through all the rings until I'm done with them. Throw like 200, uh, whatchamacallit, black rings at Dragons? Something. Yeah, you see, I just kind of heard my uh, neighbor through the wall there, so I don't know if I'm being distracting or not. I'll ask him later. on and just kind of landed in the pile of Jill I actually grabbed here. I'm fairly certain this is Jill. Let's see, I've got your name scratched onto the back here somewhere. There you are. Yeah, my two piecemeal dragons, which basically have a small sample, say head piece, a tail piece, a body piece, a leg, 
and the uh, kind of main part of the tail. Just sample weaves of them also. You know, I never forget how to make them. So uh, since this type of dragon doesn't have a name tag on them, I decided to kind of scritch their name just into the back of the dragon on the back of one of the scales. Now you see, I don't want to do that with all of the other dragons because uh, those dragons can be renamed on all of my dragon scrolls, except for Charlemagne and Cleopatra because they ask not. Um, uh, it says, uh, feel free to rename this dragon and, uh, yeah, you know, have a wonderful time with him and all that type of stuff, but, you know, feel free to rename this dragon if you wish. So, you know, if I etch their name onto the back of one of the scales, then it's like they can't be able to uh, really be renamed, can they? So they all come with a name tag, and uh, that name tag has their name and birthday on it. And you can uh, keep it on them if you want, otherwise it'll fall off over time because it is just paper. I wish I could etch it into, like, metal. Like a little, 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 little tiny metal disc. Really, Octavia, do you not want to be on stream that much? Yeah, you'll go sit over here. <laughs> Where was I? Names. So, uh, yeah, I don't want to scratch the names into the back of the dragons uh, directly. They come with a name tag in their adoption scroll, all of which has their original name. And the uh, idea is that you can just cross out the name and write in another one. And that's how you rename your dragon. You know, it's not actually explicitly stated anywhere that you rename your dragon by scratching it out and putting it in. I suppose I can put that somewhere on Planet Zeba. And, you know, eventually a video. I'm going to make a, a series of videos, actually, of uh, dragon making. Or not dragon making, that would be this video. Or, like, how to put on a dragon bracelet. And, well, the sound a dragon makes. And just other fun kind of things, facts about dragons, so to speak. That'll be all awesome and stuff. Okay. With the tail here, at least on the uh, sample piece on Jill, sample piece on Jill here, uh, we've got a fair length here, like about four or five segments worth, like after the black part there, uh, all of this is new. So we're going to disconnect it from here and attach it to uh, our green dragon here, just because, you know, I kind of flip-flop on that a little bit. Uh, do I want it to be attached to, like, Jill all the way through until the dragon is done? Or do I want to make as, you know, as much as I can to keep the weave stable and so I know what I'm doing to continue it? And then attach it to the dragon that I'm working on. And I really do like leaning towards that one. You deserve to have your tail as early as possible. So let's go and do exactly that. So this ring needs to be slanted in this direction, which is the direction that I need to attach to the body here. And I think we're going to actually end up removing this one ring on the dragon because it's a duplicate for this ring that I'm putting on right now. Oop. Oop, 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 oop. Careful, careful. Okay. Let's actually pull the old ring off first. It's just getting in the way. Oh, I can feel you, you, or your pain. Yeah. I can feel your pain, little dragon. You know I can. Pulling that ring off. How do you feel if, like, one of your bones was taken out? That's why I feel so sad about Charlotte when she eventually gets her new scales. I've got uh, frost white, since they don't really have a good, like, just solid white. They do have a decent white, but it's only painted on one side, which, in my opinion, just looks kind of awful. So, I don't really like to use that white, but I did find frost white on uh, the Ring Lord's page, and that looks fairly white, a little bit kind of dusty looking, which stands to reason because it's called frosty. But they, I asked them, they simply don't have a, you know, technological means of making like just completely like bright white sc or, uh, scales, yeah. So, that's just sad, you know. Okay. Oh, goodness. Okay, well, that just flew off. Oh, goodness. And when the weave kind of collapses in on itself, it can be a little bit difficult to resort. Elf weave is kind of tricky like that. 
Okay, let's see if I can pull this off. Uh, nope, now I've kind of created a gridlock segment inside of there, which is exactly not what I want. So, which means I need to take this out, flip you over. Nope, something's not right there. Okay, I think you need to go more that way. Okay, now if I grab this. There we go. Okay. Back in business. Oh, I just kind of flanged it around too much and it came off of a ring again. Ooh. Okay, no worries. No worries. Okay, you slant up in that direction, you slant up in that direction. You go through here. I need to hold on to you. Move the players here. Oh, do not slide off that ring. Do not slide off of that ring. Come on, get the players in there. Flip you open the other way. Stay. Come up here. Go through that ring. There we are. Okay, no sliding off. <sighs> Click of a good closure. Okay, beautiful. So we got the first link of connection inside of there, right there. So now we have a few extra rings to connect to the side. I really gotta get a highly zoomed in camera. Oh goodness. Once I get a significantly better computer, then my videos are going to rock. I think I might actually order it online. There's a good chance that I'll be able to buy it cheaper online even with shipping than uh, what I can get locally here. It's in like a small town in like uh, northern Manitoba. So selection is, well I'm honestly not entirely sure what they all have in the like two electronics stores that they have here. Which to be fair, they have two electronics stores, which is almost more than I would have figured they'd have. But I think when I looked it up, there's a population of 3,000 here. I'll try to oh, straighten my back. How long have I been streaming? 57 minutes. Okay, we'll finish the tail end. We'll call it a day here, I think. Will get us to a uh, minor dragon snake level, and that will be decent. Okay, so we have a dragon tail section, a dragon stub, <laughs> tail stub about that long. Sorry, my dragons or my uh, deities are kind of giving me suggestions on phrases today, like or to say like stub, and I'm like, oh, I don't know, that sounds like it has almost negative connotations. Then I think about it and I'm like, no, no, that sounded pretty funny. So then I try and switch to it, but then it's too late. The joys of having deities, eh? Like, oh, you came up with something better than me to say, and now I'm going to go and try and, like, undo it, and I really shouldn't because now I've prattled on about that for a while. But now you know how deities work. <laughs> In short, be spiritual. <laughs> You know, with some of the other weaves, I kind of open half the rings and close half of them. Uh, with the quarter inch rings, uh, honestly, uh, unless it's the head, all of them start as open. Um, it's only European foreign one where I start some of them as closed, and also the uh, box chain and uh, Byzantine that makes up their legs. So, yeah, kind of an interesting little fact about dragons. Unless it's a toothed, a toothed, toothed, or toothed. Unless it's a toothed dragon, all quarter inch rings start as open. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
here's a fun song. Uh, this one never actually got completed into a uh, full song yet, but it's called And Smack Them in the Cheek. <laughs> for length now. Tails. Let's see. Oh, come on. So if you're lining up for the vases. Uh, about two more segments. Maybe. Maybe one more segment. Three rings. Three more quarter inch rings. Oh goodness. One of which decided to pop off my lap and roll underneath me. And then we're going to swap to 732 inch rings for 5 rings. And then we're going to swap to 316 inch rings. And we will end it with a 532 inch ring. And that's the one that we attach the scales to, like the little tiny scales for the tip of the tails. The tip of the tails, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tail, the teeth, the lips. <laughs> you know, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, that cool kind of thing that you say over and over again to practice your enunciation. The tip of the tail, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tail, the teeth, the lips. Because, you know, dragons can touch their tails to their face pretty easily. They have very good enunciation. <laughs> okay, so now we need a few 732-inch rings. Do I have any pre-opened? I have been working with these rings before recently. And we got one pre-opened out well. Now, I believe we need five. For some reason I'm thinking it may be six, but you know, it hasn't been that long that I've kind of started keeping track of exactly how many rings are needed in exactly which sections of the dragon. Usually I've just been kind of going by feel in the past, but now the dragons are starting to get a little bit more regimented, so to speak. So one, two, three, four, five. Let's try five. I'm feeling good about five. Sure, I could figure it out if I kind of thought ahead far enough, but thinking ahead and just simply doing. Let's just simply do. I know I need at the bare minimum five of them. And then the kind of central ring, one, two, three, four, five, I'm trapped. It only needs five. <laughs> I thought ahead. And this is just to taper off the elf weave down to. 732 inch ring size, which just you know kind of creates a bit of a taper towards when we get to the 3 sixteenths. And then the 3 sixteenths tapers off into like a uh, kind of two and two chain, a double chain, or king's mail chain, a few different names. <laughs> and then two single rings, a single chain, and then it ends in the little scales. Then the scales have some customizability too there. Um, they can either be uh, forked or they can be cupped because each of the scales are, you know, kind of bold. So I could have the two bowls cupping each other. I could have the two bowls facing away to each other so they kind of have a forked tail. 
which I think would make for better stability when they're flying or running really, really quickly. In retrospect, the uh, dragon of uh, speed here should maybe have a forked tail. How about it, Simon? Want a final little edit? He said yes. Okay, let's do that really, 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 really quickly. Just because. So basically just flip the two scales over from each other. And you now have a forked tail dragon. Oh, you have more maneuverability. Wouldn't it be faster if they were uh, cupped? Maneuverability versus speed. I'm sorry. You've got to go back to cupped here. You are all about the speed and moving from one patient to another in a very optimized manner. Dragon of Compassion. Now that needs a lot of flexibility and maneuverability. You definitely need a forked tail. Okay. Come on. These rings are, are playing difficult. There we are. Okay, 732 inch rings go there. Three 16 inch rings. I was, I guess I was hoping to find some pre opened ones. There's a few. I've worked with 316 a lot, mainly on my uh, rosary beads, uh, which you can see over here. Mm, trust me, a lot of these are uh, 316s. Okay, so we only need just a few 316s worth of elf weave, that is. Okay. One, two, three. Just the last segment of elf weave is in three sixteenths. There we go. And now, okay, there we go. So now we just connect this to a uh, two rings right beside each other, like a double ring. We have one pre-closed, which is convenient, and the other one will have to close while it's still kind of attached to the tail here. Oh, I know a little green dragon. They'll get their name in the dragon naming ceremony. When we start to put the eyes in, uh, well, when I live stream, uh, my uh, viewers are able to suggest names. Of course, for the time being, anyone that I happen to be with, like say in a crafting group or just friends over or something, uh, they can suggest names, or also my deities can suggest names. So there's still several options. The last dragon sign, but I think I was the one that chose that name. Uh, let's see, God was choosing Robert, I want to say. I think he chose Robert. But we passed on that one because one of the residents at the care home, or several of them actually, are named Robert. And we didn't want to, you know, like, play favorites like, okay, this one's, you know, for you more so because it has your name and everything. And that didn't really want to lie all that well. So he swapped his vote to Simon. I want to say Yvette was another option, but I know that's wrong. It was a female name of some sort. Frida was another one that kind of popped up. Okay, so we need this last ring here doubled. There we go. That's attached to a single ring, because now we're moving down to the single one-on-one -on -one chain. Of which we just need one more 3 16 inch ring. And now we don't actually have any 532 inch rings like available here. I've got to make another order, which, whoa! Today's my first day having the internet again, for like it was gone for a week after I moved, and then I think it got installed here. So I'm going to be able to actually order more rings now, which is awesome. Because I really don't like clipping rings down to size. Like, it's not particularly difficult. If you have 50 of them, it, you know, kind of wears on you. And then when you clip the ring, you kind of have to re-round it. You kind of twist it in on itself and make it round again, because, you know, there's a several millimeter gap there. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, you can see it against my shirt there. Oh, black part. There you go. Yeah, you can see that big, giant gap there. 
So we kind of need to squeeze it evenly from all sides to get rid of that big gap, which is a nuisance, but it's hell oh goodness happening. Okay, there we go. So there you can see we have it nicely closed there. Hey! So now we'll open it again. <laughs> oh goodness, I don't wait that one will need to open it regardless. We can put scales on it. Thought we could have kept it closed, but no. Okay, so we'll put this 316 sawn over here. And then we need two green micro scales, which are way up at the top of the chainmail kit here. They just kind of come uh, randomly colored. Just, you know, you get a bag of random colored tiny scales. So we got one green. Oh, green must have gone through a lot in the past. Two green. Okay. Might have to order more and maybe start tossing out some of the ones that I never use. Like the kind of dusty silver ones. I don't really ever use those. I use the shiny silvers, but not the dusty ones. So I may or may not toss those out just to free up space and keep me from having to dig through a lot of things. Now you had a forked tail because we said that the Dragon of Compassion, I assume you are the Dragon of Compassion. I don't like to confirm it with them until we you know, actually get their head and everything and our thinking straight. So I just have a sign them like a roll before they're actually made, and that just seems mean. I don't want to do that to you. So, yay! We have uh, this dragon made up to this point. How's your tail looking for length? Oh goodness, a little bit longer actually. Eh, maybe. If it is, it's just by like one small length. That's all right. You have a little bit more finesse there. So I think that's where we'll leave it off for today. We have our cute little green dragon. Yeah. Oh, and her tail over here. Her or her or his. Again, the dragon naming ceremony, that's where they get the gender too. It can be male or female names, unless you know the dragon is specifically vehemently asking for a name beforehand, at which point, or a name or a gender, or you know, something specific beforehand. I apologize, Ichi. At which point I usually capitulate to the dragon, like, well, okay, okay, you, you know, you're making up your mind here, let's run with this type of thing. And uh yeah, that hasn't been the case right now. Really leaning towards compassion, so we'll see where that goes. And uh, otherwise, doo -doo 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 -doo. hope you enjoyed the stream. Uh, lots of chain mailing, lots of dragon making, and uh, lots of dragon showing off. <laughs> so uh, have a wonderful night, all.